Let's start in five minutes. Four minutes now.
Hello. Mm -hmm. Hello. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's get started then. So today we are going to talk about. Uh, Sequence modeling, recurrent and recursive net neural networks. Uh, let me just okay. So so uh, first, I wanted to just introduce how the architecture of a RNN looks like. And for questions, I'll keep checking because Laura is not available today. Uh, I'll uh, I'll just keep checking every five to ten minutes. So uh, please let me know on the on the YouTube page. And um, so every two three slides, two slides. Uh, and uh, so so this is so I just wanted to first introduce the architecture of a, a recurrent uh, neural network. And uh, so uh, this is this is one representation of a recurrent neural network. So this x is the input, h is a hidden layer, and I'll explain. But the, uh, they call it like a loop on h uh, with a with a w, and uh, h this hidden layer goes to an output, and then a loss function is computed using this output and the actual um, actual output. So this could be like a classification with a softmax, and a loss function would be computed using this output and this y. Uh, and when you unfold this this loop, what it looks in actuality is something like this. So uh, it could be so there are there are there are different versions of this, but this is the most uh, prevalent uh, architecture of a recurrent neural net. So this is the this is the architecture in which uh, it's modeled on the basis of time. So, uh, so if there are, for example, it's uh, if if the input is a sentence of three words, then um, for example, uh, this is this is uh, a meetup. Then uh, x t minus one is this. X t is uh, is and xt plus 1 is meetup. And uh, and let's suppose we are trying to convert it into French or some, some other language. Then these y will be the conversion of this, um, of, of this uh, sequence. So uh, And the way it works is it will take the first word and then uh, put uh, our embedding of the first word, and then it will so em by embedding, I mean like a representation, a, a vector representation of the word, for example. And then it will take, a, it will multiply it with a matrix U, and then it will add it to, uh, it will add it to what is coming from before in the network, from from a previous time step. And uh, then it will have two outputs. One is for the next layer, uh, which is HT. And then there is an output OT minus 1, which is also computed here. So if you see the formulas here, uh, uh, if the first AT is basically uh, computed before you compute. Uh, compute then. So, so AT is the output, is, is the hidden layer value. And then what, what is sent to the next layer is basically a, a nonlinearity applied to AT, and then OT 
OT is actually um, another linear transformation on HT uh, to, to match it with the output. And then uh, Y bar T is softmax of uh, OT, which is used to compute, uh, uh, which is used to compute the loss function. So now, uh, so this is a regular architecture of a recurrent neural net, like the most uh, basic one. And the loss loss function is computed. At, the loss function can be computed on every. So all these losses can be added together to form. So this is a log likelihood uh, log likelihood loss. And if you see that each each y t is dependent on x t minus one and all previous x t's uh, because of the architecture of this network. But it's not dependent on the previous y t's because of the uh, uh, because these do not come into play. So if you see this formula, then uh, uh, then the loss function can be written something like this: that each y t is dependent on all the x t's up to t, and then you just find the softmax probabilities and then uh, the log likelihoods, and then sum them together, and that's the loss function. So uh, so uh, let me see if there are any questions. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so now uh, after this, we can uh, 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 we can see that RNNs especially uh, are especially useful for sequential data like language to language translations or language to like a summarization of a sentence so when there is a when there is sequential data then rnns are act very useful and uh, the most important concept that it borrows uh, uh, that it builds upon is that parameters uh, parameters can be can be reused across different parts of a model so for uh, for example uh, in this figure this uh, this w parameter is shared across different parts or is this v parameter is shared in different parts of the model so that's the most important thing so in a feed forward network every parameter is a new parameter but here uh, these parameters get shared so that's the most important uh, thing that gets used and also what what it helps with is that uh, so, uh, if, if, for example, we are trying to extract the year from these two sentences, I went to Nepal in 2009, and in 2009, I went to Nepal. If you feed it to a, a feed forward network, then it will be, uh, uh, it, it will have to learn the, all the rules of the language to be able to say that the year is 2009. But uh, in, a, in a recurrent neural net, uh, this, this, these parameters are shared. So, um, uh, so it's the same at every step. So, so if you see, it will it will have just after training it will have just one uh, uh, one loop. So when when you pass in that full sentence through this one, it will be uh, it will it's, it it does not like it does not take into account the 
the structure of the language. So uh, it performs better in these, these type of sequential tasks. And uh, a related idea that the book mentions is a 1D temporal sequence convolution. So you can think of it as uh, a convolution across across steps. Uh, but it's it's uh, but the problem with that is that it's not very deep, uh, uh, so it does not give a good classifier. And uh, and then the introduction mentions that this is the first time the computational graphs will can have cycles, and the present value can uh, affect the future values. So um, uh, so the hidden layer, if you see the xt minus 1 can affect the value of ht plus 1 so uh, because there is a cycle here so that's the uh, that's what is meant uh, is meant here and then the book goes into how, uh, computational graphs and how uh, how they work so in a classical system this f f s t minus one and the, there are like parameters theta which gives s t for example so you could class uh, just recursing you could get s3 as on the basis of s2 and s4 as a on the basis of s3 so if you see uh, this gets represented something like this in a computational graph uh, s s is from before come to s t minus one and then you have s t and you apply f to s t to get s t minus s t plus one uh, and it can have sometimes it can also have inputs. So uh, these st minus ones can also have inputs. So this is for a for a the book called something of a dynamic system, and these can be computational graphs on the dynamic system. And uh, so so hidden units. Oh, okay, let me see if there is anything. I'll go back to no questions. So, OK. So now unfolding computational graph, hidden units. So hidden units, how are hidden units useful? So hidden units, one way to interpret hidden units is that they are basically so uh, basically summaries of whatever has, has happened before. So if you think in this network, HT gets passed to, to the next step. Nothing else gets passed to the next step. So ht could uh, could be interpreted as a summary of all xts that came before ht, or all ys that came before ht. So uh, so in uh, in the extreme case of autoencoders, uh, uh, autoencoders, it has to predict everything that happened before. Uh, but uh, but it could be like in in in, for example, um, language translation, you can think of HT as you know uh, as carrying on whatever was done before. Uh, so uh, whatever knowledge needs to be kept in in the system to be able uh, from from before to be able to do the future tasks. So that is the interpretation of a of the hidden unit. Uh, So another interpretation is that uh, wh whatever the input size, hidden units, uh, by hidden units, what happens is whatever the input size be, the input to, to, uh, to the last step of the recurrent neural net is of the same size. So instead of a variable length history of all the inputs, there, there is only one input that is coming in. And if you you can even use the same transition function. So uh, if uh, if for example for for example here the same transition function also gets used. For example, uh, ht comes ht comes in here uh, to ht ht plus one, and the same transition function is always used. The transition function being tan h to compute ht plus one, ht plus two. Sorry. So uh, so that that. Uh, that's what uh, that's what is the purpose of a hidden unit and the uh, transition function f. Uh, 
Are there any questions? Uh, there are. Please let me know. Or uh, okay. So there is. So now we'll come to a different type, a little bit different type of a uh, of a RNN. So in this RNN. Instead of h t minus 1, instead of h having a self loop, actually the output, uh, the output has a loop to the hidden unit. What it means is the output. And one thing I forgot to mention is that, uh, is that uh, this sort of a RNN is Turing complete. So uh, any, anything that can be done by a Turing machine, which uh, which is same as anything that can be done by a regular computer can also be modeled by a RNN. So, um, and also that, so this is the, this is a little different type of RNN. And this is not Turing complete, but it will have some users which will come to uh, in a little bit. Uh, and um, so uh, this, in, in this RNN, what happens is, that instead of hidden units directly going to the next hidden unit, the output of the hidden unit goes to the next hidden unit. So this output actually goes to the next hidden unit. Uh, and um, the reasoning, so, and, and this is strictly less, uh, less powerful than, uh, uh, than the previous version. So this, this version in which instead of this, hidden unit going to the next hidden unit, we send uh, the output to the next hidden unit. Can, can you think of why why this happens? Like uh, why uh, the output goes to the next hidden unit is uh, strictly strictly less powerful than, uh, than, than hidden units directly going to the next hidden unit? O O is the output. Uh, o O is the output, and uh, uh, this is strictly less powerful because, see, H H can model anything, right? H has no limitations as to what it's modeling. H could be modeling when was the next last full stop, or H could be modeling when was the last uh, uh, capital letter that came. Uh, but O is actually modeling, O is actually trying to reduce, uh, o, o, by O we are trying to match Y. So O is actually trying to match Y through this loss function. So o, when we pass in O, we cannot pass O, R, o to the, uh, an arbitrary value to the next layer. So that's why this, uh, this, Configuration is strictly less powerful than than the pre, uh, than the previous one, and and the book claims that this is not Turing complete. So the previous one was actually Turing complete, which means like it could process anything that a computer could process, but this one is not Turing complete because uh, uh, because of this particular reason. It it's useful for different reasons, but uh, uh, but it's strictly less powerful. Uh, but uh, yes, O is a is a, a fine transformation, but mm, but see, there is a O is an affine transformation, but there is no loop in H, right? So H doesn't model the next H. O models the next H, and. Uh, That's the reasoning. I don't think there is a formal reasoning given uh, in the book, you know, uh, of this uh, of this. But that's the intuition behind it. Uh, that uh, I, I see that uh, I see uh, that O is 
O is just a fine, uh, a fine transformation of H, but uh, hmm. I don't think it's about the affine transformation. It's probably because of the way the network is connected. That's why it's less uh, uh, like if H was connected to H, then it has more power than H going to O and going to W. And, and when you optimize, you're optimizing O to match Y. So that's the reason. It's, it's, it's not just a linear transformation. I think it's two things right uh, one is it's uh, it's changing the changing the architecture of the network that's what i would guess like i don't think the book has a real uh, a reason behind it it just uh, it's just intuition that's that they are giving okay so let's go to the next slide OK, so then, then the book talks about uh, teacher, uh, teacher forcing. So in teacher forcing, uh, there is a, this is, a, uh, this is just a term. But uh, if you see what, uh, what this loss function is modeling uh, in the previous step, is uh, the reason for, uh, y, is the probability of y1, y2 happening if y1 and y2 are in a sequence given x1 and x2? Now, this could be interpreted as two different ones, uh, uh, probability of y2 happening given y1, x1, x2, and log plus the loss can be written as plus log of p y1 given x1 and x2. OK, why is it x1 and x2? It should be just x1, I think. Maybe there was an error there. but. Uh, so, but what you could do is instead of when you're modeling this, then the book says that instead of passing uh, passing the guest guest, so OT is the OT minus one is the guesstimate or guest guest value uh, for YT minus one. So why not why not just take YT minus one and feed, because at training time we know YT minus one. So why not just feed it directly to the next layer instead of feeding H T minus one? So that's what is so and we Y T minus one we we already know. So that's that's what this this uh, this change in architecture does. Uh, and and this is uh, and what we also do is at test time we uh, we change it so that. Uh, uh, at test time, there is no yt minus one available. So at test time, we change it, change the architecture a little bit to to pass in the ot minus one as uh, to ht directly. So, uh, uh, but but uh, the good thing it gives is that it decouples. So there is no um, so when you so to train this model. You have to take all loss functions these and back propagate it to all these, all these U, Vs, and uh, Ws. So even L T plus one actually affects this uh, um, uh, multiple. Even though W is shared, you have to uh, you, uh, you have to do. Uh, there will be a component of L T plus one, L T, L T minus one, and everything at every time step, but. But here, what happens is, uh, because you you could do everything pa in parallel, so you need not have uh, you need not have for, to compute the gradient of W. You can just do do it in this loop independent of this loop because L T minus one is independent of L T. Uh, sorry, L. It's not independent, but it's. Uh, yeah, because y t minus one comes from training set. It's like nobody has control over it, right? So, um, so you it's not uh, it's not outputted by the model. So this l t minus one or and l t are independent. Uh, the model parameters do not affect. There is no effect. 
by the model parameters between these two. So you can train this layer separately from this layer, and then add the uh, add the gradients together. So you so the uh, the trick to to get gradients is called back propagation through time, this BPTT. But it's an expensive operation, and if if you have this kind of a network, then it's uh, um, then then uh, then you don't have to do that. But the flip side is that uh, you don't have uh, at test time it can cause it can cause problems. So the, at test time, the problem it causes is like if you have not seen. Uh, it, it does not give you good results if you have not seen the type of inputs before. So it uh, actually gives you uh, uh, not not so good results. But there are some techniques that the book discusses. Like uh, you can, uh, uh, you, at test time, you can, or at train time, you can train both uh, both on the previous input and the hidden layer, in, uh, uh, both on yt minus 1 and ot minus 1. Or you can pick O T minus one or Y two T minus one, so you can do combinations of these uh, to train your model, and then uh, then at test time uh, it, it captures the long range uh, long range dependencies better. So let me check the questions quickly. Okay. Okay. No questions. All right, so the next slide goes into uh, 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 like this is this is a different uh, different uh, way of using recurrent neural nets. So in this one, there's only one output. So, for example, you are. This is this could be used for um, like sentiment analysis or something. You're given a sentence, and you have to just say if it's a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment. So then, this there is a sentence and there is one output. So uh, the, this this can also be. This is also a pretty used architecture. Um, okay, I'll go to the next one. So now uh, I won't go into like total nitty gritty details of how these uh, uh, BPTT gradients are calculated, but I'll give you uh, like um, I'll try to. Uh, I didn't really derive them, but um, I think I have some intuition behind it. So first of all, first thing is that uh, so. The BPTT is for this for this particular uh, architecture. So the first thing is that uh, so the first at time step t dl by dlt uh, no for any time step uh, for any time step right yeah because because l is just a summation of all the losses on on all time steps. So DL by uh, the partial derivative of DL by DLT is one because this is just a summation. So everything else is zero. So uh, this is one. Now, uh, now the uh, the differential of L with respect to OT and uh, the ith component of it. So uh, let's, so this is the term. The differential of L with respect to OTs. The ith component of, or or this one is more clear. Lt, oh sorry, uh, the differential of Lt with respect to Ot. This is just a linear transformation. Uh, so this should be wait, Ot. Wait, this is not a linear transformation. This is a softmax because we are doing a softmax function there uh, to be able to uh, get probabilities and match with WIs, uh, PIs. So, so if you see, it comes to DL by DLT and DLT by DOT. And DL by DLT we know is one. So this is just a softmax. And if you remember, this is the uh, this is the formula for a softmax. It just is like what the real value is minus minus one I think this is the, the gradient of a of a softmax where where one one by one it means I think one in the position where of the true value where other, so for example this was predicting 
like a one hot vector in a in a in a uh, classification then there is one on the correct value everything else is zero and this is the real values uh, wait uh, so uh, i don't remember exactly but this is the formula for the differential of a um, uh, of a softmax so which is dlt by dot and uh, uh, and then you can come to uh, uh, the differential of L with respect to HD, which will be same as this is just a linear transformation on this on this particular differential, on this differential. So then you just multiply it by VT. Um, no, sorry. So this is this is the case for the final timestamp, final timestamp. So for the final timestamp, there is um, there is nothing coming from ahead in the network, but uh, uh, but for a regular timestamp when they're in the middle of the network so this this one uh, HD, D, D, uh, in the middle of the network there are two components of uh, DL with respect to DHT so in the middle of the network there are two components one is one is coming from so if if you are trying to compute dl uh, by dht then one component comes from this from this side and then there is another component that comes from this side and in the last step there is nothing from this side so that's why uh, uh, this one is interesting so this is the this is the formula of uh, formula that comes from ahead and this is the formula that comes from uh, from above in the network, and uh, this is this is the math derivation like uh, derivation for it. Uh, I won't go. And this is using those two, you can compute all the other all the other all the others are gen generally just linear um, just linear transformations. So you can compute uh, you can compute those um, those derivatives using uh, for all the other matrices. Uh, so this is so that's how that's how the BPTT works on this network. Uh, any questions? I'll just uh, okay. All right. So uh, now now the book goes into uh, after that the book goes into uh, director directed graphical method models for um, for so so in the first part it it kind of neglects that there is an input uh, so if you have like an output sequence then uh, what uh, uh, then how, how are the directed uh, directed sequences uh, how are the directed computational graphs set up so that's what this graphical model set up and if you see in this, so in this one, if you set up uh, this kind of a this kind of an architecture, then the number of parameters of this architecture is not constant. It's it depends on the number of layers on this network or number of timestamps on this network. So uh, uh, so uh, yeah, uh, so th that's what the gist of this is that. If you set up, if you're trying to get a loss function for a, for an architecture where yt is dependent on all previous y's, then the number of parameters becomes uh, becomes exponential. Um, so uh, that's the so if you for example add another one, then there will be like uh, a number of connections from this other one to all all of them ahead. So uh, that's the it leads to exponential number of parameters. So that's why we use hidden units. So what hidden units do is uh, make the number of if in if you change that architecture to this architecture, then the number of parameters becomes constant in this in this computational uh, unit. So you go from uh, you just introduce a hidden unit to y1, and then y1 interacts with h1, and h1 interacts with h2, and um, y2 is is an input. To 
h2 but it's an output from h1 so uh, uh, wait mm. yeah and also but what what happens here is that uh, if you if you have these so these introduce long chain dependencies so y1 could be affecting y5 so which means that it optimizing it might be difficult because the gradient to uh, like if you compute a loss function then it, you you will have a lot of different uh, uh, gradients to add up so that's the problem with uh, um, a problem with so the back propagation becomes difficult and also that uh, this approach kind of assumes that these transformations are if these transformations are similar from h3 to h3 to h4 and h3 to y4 then it assumes that uh, the distribution is stationary that you know it doesn't depend h4 only depends on uh, uh, the way h4 depends is let me define stationary stationary means uh, the way h4 depends on its previous input is the same as how h5 depends on its previous inputs uh, like the only the parameters change the the way so in here for example the way y2 depends on its previous input is different from the way y3 depends on its previous inputs it has two inputs right uh, uh, so but here the way h4 depends on its previous inputs is just this one line similarly so that's what is that, that's why it's called stationary distribution Now the book goes into how to draw samples. Uh, how, um, like this is just a, a part of, like once you find the conditional probability of how to get the next output from the current state and inputs, then uh, when you have, there is another task that is there. The one is, the task is how do you signal how large the output is? Like, uh, for example, if you have a three, uh, uh, if you're translating from English to French, when to stop translating? So one could be one method could be that you use a delimiter. So basically, you tr you put every English sentence at the end of it. You put like a delimiter, and uh, that delimiter gets trained with the network. And when the network in the test time, when the network outputs that delimiter, you stop. So that's one way to do it. The other way is to have a Boolean. So, um, so for example, at, at the end of the network, you are also modeling a Bernoulli Boolean uh, variable. And uh, uh, that uh, that is more general because you know, it could be like, it could apply to things other than, uh, uh, other than sentences. And also the, you could, you could, when you're on test time, with your inputs you can also model a length so then um, then the output model will not only model the output sequence it will also mod, uh, output a length of the sequence so that's the main way you will uh, to draw samples from uh, from the rnn classifier uh, okay so now uh, now the book goes into let me check if there are any questions. I hope I'm online. Can you guys hear me or Okay, I will go back to. Okay, so then there is a then there is a directed. Um, uh, 
Okay. So the previous one in which the uh, the graphical model was uh, being modeled just on the on one set of one set of uh, variables y's, and now for example we have like the real RNN and we also model x x, uh, x as input. So uh, so let's suppose we add x x which is an input and we we give every time step the same x then it then the, the this is a valid network and this could be used for something like this like uh, image uh, uh, image uh, summarizing an Im image but the problem with this is that uh, that if you if if you you could think of it as adding a bias term dependent on x to every time step. So if you think like this xr is just a bias term added on every time step to ht minus 1. So that's that's what that's what this can be interpreted as. And the other if if you think of it as uh, uh, like if you if you think of it, if you put the whole input to every time step, so then that will happen. Generally, what we have is one small input to every time step, like in the uh, basic RNN case. So that's the motivation behind having one uh, x, one uh, part of x on, in every time step. OK. so. So if, uh, like like we were seeing before, this uh, uh, the regular version of RNN is actually uh, the regular version in which there are no uh, so this version. If you go back to this version, right? See, Y's do not affect any further Y's because uh, only only X's have arrows to Y's. Uh, to this loss function for y, so the the probability distribution that it's trying to model is is this one. It can be written as this. Y probability of y t given all x that came before this y, but uh, but if you if you add a like like in teacher modeling. If you add a connection from the output of previous step to to this step, so if you add like OT minus one to HT this connection, then it allows you to uh, to model any arbitrary distribution over Y, like Y uh, like YT given previous Ys as well. So that's that's what the, the thing mentioned. Then there is another uh, another let me see, this is the last slide. Uh, why we draw a sample? So when when you are at uh, when we why we draw a sample is that uh, is that uh, after you have tested, right? Like how would you uh, how would you draw a sample from? So after you have trained this network. After you have trained this network, now you are given a new input. You have to draw a sample from uh, whatever probability distribution that this this uh, this classifier is modeling, which gives the best uh, loss best loss likelihood um, here, right? But then the problem is, uh, given this, when do you when do you in a recurrent neural network when do you stop in that draw? Like you draw you drew the first one. You drew the second one. You drew the sec third one. Uh, when uh, because because if you see, it's the same parameters, right? So given a new input, you will you will feed the first version. Like here here, it's a fixed length input and fixed length output. But generally, if you are translating, uh, it's not fixed length input and fixed length output. You, uh, the output could have multiple uh, a different length than the input. And how do you uh, how do you stop sampling in Y? So that's that's why 
th there is one more step that is needed and which is to how to how to model the end of a sequence and that is done by these three methods okay so now uh is there another one also so this last one is uh this last one is bidirectional so bidirectional rnns are important so uh, the book gives an example that in in speech recognition uh, what happens is uh, your, the meaning of the sound is not only dependent on things in the past but also things in the future so uh, if you model if you model the basic version of rnn then it does not give a very good example uh, a good uh, mm, uh, uh, it does not do a good job with uh, speech recognition. So what you do is basically you uh, do a bidirectional RNNs. So by, by with bidirectional RNNs, what you can do is not only do these RNNs go in the f in the f uh, uh, so these RNNs go in both directions. So not only do they go in this direction in higher time step, there is also input from the highest time step to the lower time step. So this way. Uh, you could also see it as like you flip the you you flip the uh, x and then you um, uh, then you get, get another loss function uh, and that way uh, at each each y each ot is modeled with two inputs one is coming from a higher t and one is coming from all the lower t's so this gives a better result if there are dependencies on both sides of the uh, of the sequence and uh, this uh, uh, and one good so this can be used with images when images have like long dependencies so not uh, like if one pixel affects a, a, another pixel at a very uh, at a at a longer f further apart then this can be used even with images in two dimensions so the book goes into a two dimensional uh, Two-dimensional RNN, in which one axis is going, one axis is going time domain. So if time is like uh, left to right, and one is going top to bottom, so that that models a two D two D RNN. So you could have something like that for a two D input. So not a one D input, but a two D input like image, um, and uh, also. Uh, can be extended. Yeah, is this the last one? Yeah, that's the. Yeah, the, so the rest will be rest of the chapter. There are other echo state and other things will be covered by Soheb in the in the next class. So, uh, if you have any questions. I guess so. It says like uh, uh, it says that RNN is Turing complete. So I guess any state diagram could be could be made into a. F Actually, it's. I think the book claims that with a finite number of uh, finite number of steps, uh, RNN can be um, yeah, uh, RNN can be can model a Turing machine. So with a finite number of steps. Uh, I guess a, a finite state diagram can be modeled into a layered network. I, I, I would guess. So, uh, yeah, so this, so if there are, sorry, today was a little, a uh, little bit of a of a like we couldn't start on time uh, there's some problems but uh, uh, maybe mm, the discussion was a little different because uh, Laura was not moderating the chat today but if you have any questions please uh, post now uh, and we can discuss or or uh, you can put it on the meetup and we can discuss as well Otherwise, uh, 
otherwise we'll resume rest of the chapter next uh, next next week thank you thank you all right thanks a lot thanks a lot and uh, we will we will resume next week have a good weekend thanks bye